Hello again, folks. It's Barry with Barry's A Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. And today's demonstration is going to be an FM conversion on a uh, radio out of a 68 Charger. Uh, this is sent in by Troy in uh, Petaluma, California. And uh, as usual, we're running it through all the uh, various testing phases to make sure everything's working properly before we send her back. So I've got it set to FM at the moment. So let's just fire this puppy up. <laughs> We're going to run it across the dial, make sure we pick up a good number of FM stations. Okay, and here we go. Throw it into the canal or into the streets. Heart transplant. There was a book that I read. Moments like these are possible because of the like you. Shepherds in this world, and yes. Three five five nine forty four. Niles Radio and ninety two point nine Calf Country. Oh. It's possible. Grab the lucky goldie bit. Partner of the Arizona Cardinals. Right now, get a seventy dollar. Most people don't know what to say about drugs. Located on historic Whiskey Row in downtown Pro Things like that. <laughs> What's the way forward? <laughs> about 28 FM station that's pretty typical for this area now we're gonna flip it over to AM and make sure that works and uh, if the radio did not have an AM FM switch the way to switch between AM and FM is to simply turn it off and then back on within about half a second so here we go off on okay now we're hearing the familiar AM sounds make sure we pick up a couple of AM stations so that Congress can kind of... And we should pick up a strong one pretty soon around the middle of the dial. Side zone. And there's our strong AM station. Okay, so let's flip it back over to FM so I can demonstrate the, the balance and fader controls. Uh, this radio does have a balance control, left-right balance. So we're going to work that real quick. Right only. Left only. Right only. Left only. Okay, back to center. Okay, and now this radio also has a virtual front rear fader, and for that we're going to have to bring our output level meters into the picture so we can see the results of our adjustments. And get our unit back into the scene somewhere here. There we are. Okay, to activate the virtual front rear fader, uh, we're going to rotate the tone control twice uh, upwards, and that's going to activate our tone control. And because this unit has a Bluetooth, you'll have a female voice saying, uh, fader adjust when it successfully activates. So uh, we uh, give this tone control two turns upward, which means I'm going to rotate it to about the center position, so I've got room to rotate it upwards. And here we go. Fader adjust. Okay. Now we said, uh, she says, fader adjust. Front, rear only. We're using the tone control to make this adjustment. Front only, rear only. <coughs> Excuse me. Rear only. Okay, I'm going to center the speakers. Give it a... Okay, that one beep lets us know that that setting is saved. This is, once again, just a tone control. Okay, now we're going to test the line inputs real quick. Uh, I've just got a couple of RCA jacks in the back for your line input, and the, uh, the radio will automatically switch when it senses a signal at those jacks. So here's one. There's my little test tone. And on the right side as well. 
And now after using the uh, the virtual fa or the after after using the aux input, there will be a 20 second delay before the radio comes back. Uh, that is due to a Vox circuit VOX voice operated switch that holds on to the aux signal a little longer than necessary just to make sure we're not constantly switching back and forth between songs or during our quiet music passages. So there's our radio coming back by itself. And the last thing to check, let's make sure that the Bluetooth uh, activates and I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to activate. I'm not going to go to all the time of pairing it with a device, but uh, to activate it, I'm going to give the volume control two quick turns upward, and then there should be a female voice coming on saying, ready to pair, or Bluetooth ready to pair. So here we go. Bluetooth ready to pair. Okay, and there's our female voice, Bluetooth ready to pair. Uh, since I'm not going to be pairing it with anything, after 90 seconds, she'll come back on saying, pairing not completed. While we're waiting for that, let's pop in an 8-track, make sure that works. Got some Anne Murray. Someone whispers down and don't go. Switch tracks a bunch of times. Okay, we're between songs here, so we'll just wait for the next song to start. There we are. Switch tracks some more. Nice, bright sounding A track. So many things do. Okay, I'm going to pull my tape out. Now, after the A-track, the radio does come back immediately. And there's our radio. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, that's everything has been uh, successfully tested. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, let that female voice come back on saying, pairing not completed, just so we know that, uh, that that part works as well. Pairing not completed. Okay, and there's our female voice saying, pairing not completed. So that uh, that completes the test. Everything's working properly. She's ready to go back to the customer. I'm ready to get on to the next job. And let's just see if we can find myself here among, among all this mess of cameras and wires. There I am. Uh, once again, I'm Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. Needless to say, if you have an 8-Track player either for home or for car use in need of service, you can reach me directly at 928-533-9666. And you just see what I can done with a, a Classic Car AM radio, uh, an 8-Track. I can add FM, Bluetooth, a USB reader, aux input, and probably a couple uh, other cool things as well. So, thank you so much for watching and listening. My website is in the description below, and we will see you next time.